Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and welcome to a really quick impromptu casual video where I'm going to be reacting to the Goodreads Choice Award nominees. Today is Tuesday, November 15th. It's 8.30 a.m. I know that the nominees are up so I'm going to take a couple minutes and look through them and I thought I might as well film my reaction, see if I've read many of the nominees and who I would vote for. I also will be determining kind of live whether I want to do some kind of video related to the Goodreads Choice Awards this year. I have not attempted to do that in the past but I know that there are a lot of creators who like to read all of the nominees within a certain category or win all of the winners across categories or whatnot and I've always thought that looks fun but I'm not sure if it will fit within my reading plans so we'll take a look at the nominees and see if that's something I want to try to incorporate this year. Before we get into that if you are looking at me and you're like Jordan you don't wear glasses. You are correct. I very rarely wear glasses, uh, but I do have a prescription. I wear contacts every day. And I was reached out to by the company Zinth, which is an online glasses shop. Zinth offered to send me a complimentary pair of prescription glasses in return for featuring them in a video and sharing a special discount code to any of my viewers. So I said yes. These are the glasses that I chose. They are in the frame called Tide. I really like them. I personally prefer large glasses. And these ones actually have glitter on the side, which I know some people don't want glitter on their glasses, but I want all the glitter on my glasses. And it looks like Zinf has all kinds of options in terms of prescription glasses, non-prescription frames that you can get like the blue light blocking lenses. You can get prescription sunglasses, a lot of options. And like I mentioned, they did share a specific code for anyone who follows me to use if you are in the market for some new glasses. There is a general code, which I will put on the screen now and also link in the description box. This does not ever expire and it gets you 50% off of any frames and 10% off of lenses. And there is also a special Black Friday discount code that is a better discount but has a time limit. I will put that one on the screen now. This is only valid until November 30th. So like 15 more days, definitely get on it if you want to use it. And it is for 35% off your entire order, not including the shipping fee. And I have been told that this is the biggest discount you can get on the website, even including just the general Black Friday sale they have going on. So click the link in my description if you are looking for glasses and otherwise, let's get into this reaction video. Okay, I'm going to turn you this direction so you can see my face as I am reacting to the screen. Okay, I'm on my main page of Goodreads and I'm going to go to the Goodreads Choice Awards 2022. Let's take a look what's up for votes this year. We're going to start with fiction. Best fiction opening round nominees. All right, we've got a Barbara Kingsolver. Have not read that. The new Hanya Yanagihara. I have not read that. Let's talk about what I have read. True Biz by Sarah Novick. I have read this. It's a contemporary book about a school for deaf children. We follow multiple different characters, including deaf and non-deaf characters. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars, so this may get my vote. I have not read Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen, but I know that that's a pretty popular one on booktube these days. Notes on an Execution I have read. I gave it three stars. Not my favorite, but I do know a lot of people liked this one as well. It follows a serial killer who is uh, awaiting his own execution and we get a countdown of that. Plus we get um, perspectives from his victims and other women in his life. Matt Honey is on here, which I have seen people generally enjoy. Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. I have not read yet, but I do own it and I want to read it very soon. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow I have read. This one actually won the book of the month, book of the year competition. Uh, so this one I expect to get a lot of votes over True Biz, which was also a nominee. Interesting that there's another Jodi Pico. I didn't know, maybe they changed that rule, but I thought that the same author couldn't have two books nominated within the same category. Not sure. And then Frederick Bachman's The Winners is the third book in the Beartown series which I have read the first two books of. I don't have any plans to read this third one and I have not heard anyone else talk about it. So in summary, I guess my vote for this category would be True Biz, but I expect Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow to be a fairly popular vote. But also if we're going by number of people who have read and rated these books in general, then Wish You Were Here by Jodi Pico blows pretty much all of the rest of them out of the water with 143,000 ratings on Goodreads. So that is my official prediction for the winner of the fiction category. Let's move on to Mystery and Thriller, which I hope and expect that I've read a good number of these books. 
The Night Shift by Alex Finlay. Did not read this, heard pretty mixed reviews on it. Killers of a Certain Age I have not read, but I know that people who have read this book have liked it, or at least I think I've heard that. Not many people on Goodreads have read this book yet though. The Family Game by Katherine Stedman. I just recently read this book as part of one of my book of the month reading vlogs. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars, so I'm happy to see it on this list. The Overnight Guest by Heather Gudenkoff. I have not read this book, but I have read from this author before, so I could see myself potentially reading this book in the future. A Flicker in the Dark. I'm happy to see this. I have read this book. A lot of people have read this book. It came out very early in the year. I wonder why it's showing up as not having read it, but I do think I gave it four stars. More Than You'll Ever Know. I have not even heard of this book. It does not have very many ratings. Interesting. I'd be surprised if this one gets to the top 10. The Maid by Nita Prose. I have not read this, but a lot of people have. 215,000 ratings. I think that's the highest I've seen so far. I think this is somewhat of a cozy mystery, which I would be interested in reading at some point. So that's good news. The Violin Conspiracy. I'm so happy to see this book on here. I gave this five stars. I loved it. Not many people have read it, so I'm not sure if it'll get to the top 10, but so far this book absolutely has my vote. Lucy Foley, The Paris Apartment. I thought this one was okay, but a lot of people have read this book, so I definitely expect it to make it to the top 10, and I think it's a contender for winner. I give it three stars. All good people here. I have not read this book. I think the author of this book is a like true crime podcast host, so I know that she has a lot of built-in fans there. The Bullet That Missed looks like it's the third book in the Thursday Murder Club series, which a lot of people love. Not sure how many people have actually read this third book, but I know it's a popular series. The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. I have not read this book. I haven't had the best luck with this writer duo in the past. I expect this to make it to the top 10, but I'm not super excited about it. Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister. I have read this. I really liked it. I gave it four stars. It's kind of a time loop type thriller that I thought was really interesting. I know some people haven't loved it, but I really liked it. So I hope this one makes it through. Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier. I have not read this book, but I have read from this author before. Not surprised to see this on the list. Same with The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. Not something I have read or am particularly interested in, but I would read it if the occasion arose. Jackal by Erin E. Adams. I have seen this floating around a lot. I think it just came out and it doesn't have many ratings on here, so not sure if it'll make it to the next round of voting, but I would like to read it at some point. And then The It Girl by Ruth Ware. Not surprised at all to see this on here. I really like Ruth Ware and this book was okay. I give it three stars. The new Lisa Jewell. This is a sequel to The Family Upstairs. I read that book, didn't love it. Not really interested in the sequel, but not surprised to see it on here. Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I'm actually surprised that this only has 47,000 ratings, maybe since it's still a relatively new release, but I loved this one. I also wonder why this one isn't showing up as me having read it, because I have and I loved it. I gave it either four or five stars. And then The House Made by Frida McFadden. I have not read this, but I've heard of it. 85,000 ratings. Would definitely be interested in potentially reading it at some point in the future, especially because, wow, 4.37 average rating. That's really high. So overall, I think my prediction for winner is probably The Paris Apartment. The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley or maybe The Maid by Nita Prose. They both have over 200,000 ratings and I have also heard a lot of people talking about them, but my personal vote would be for The Violin Conspiracy. Let's move on to historical fiction. I won't spend as much time in this category because I know some people don't like it, but let's talk about the books that I have read. Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I really liked this one, gave it four stars, and I can see this one being a contender for winning this category. Although Lessons in Chemistry is also a very popular one that I have not read yet. The Last House on the Street by Diane Chamberlain I have on my TBR to read very soon, so I probably will be reading this by the time these awards are over, but I have not read it yet. Black Cake is also on my TBR. I probably am going to be choosing this from Book of the Month as my uh, Book of the Year nominee free book. Yet another Outlander book is on here. The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn I have not read, but I have loved Kate Quinn books in the past. And that is it for this category. So my vote would be for Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I also think this is my prediction for the winner for this category. Fantasy, we can do a quick scroll through, but I don't think I've probably read any of the books in here. Predictions for the winner, maybe Babel, but also probably Sarah J Maas. 
Otherwise, I don't really know. Definitely not my category. Romance. Okay, I think I actually have surprisingly read a lot of romance this year. So let's see what we have. Right off the bat, I also see two Colleen Hoovers. Is that new this year? I don't know, but it starts with us and Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. I've read them both. Gave them four stars. Really liked them. Catherine Center's new book I have not read, but I have read from her in the past. Generally enjoyed. Abby Jimenez, I have not read yet, but I know a lot of people have loved Part of Your World this year, including two of my friends, Gwen and Jesse. Hook, Line, and Sinker is a sequel to It Happened One Summer. I have not read that book or this one. You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. I also really liked this one. I give it four stars. The Kiss Curse is a sequel. I think it's still pretty new, so it doesn't have a ton of ratings, but I did hear a lot of people talking about that first book. The Wedding Crasher, have not read it or heard of it. Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I have not read this, but a lot of people have. I expect this to make it to the top 10 for sure. Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. I did read this one. It looks like a lot of ratings, over 200,000, and I gave it two stars, but a potential contender for the winner, I guess. Dating Dr. Dill, have not read it. The American Roommate Experiment, have not read it. Thank you for listening. Have read it. Loved it. Four stars. Doesn't look like it has a ton of ratings, so might not make it to the next round, but definitely an enjoyable romance if you like the genre but haven't read that one yet. Funny You Should Ask. Have not read it. Have not seen great reviews for it. Twisted Hate. I know this is part of a series I think that a lot of people really like. I have not read it. Delilah Green doesn't care. Have not read it. Ooh, Every Summer After. This was a very big book this summer. It looks like it doesn't quite have as many ratings as some of the other books on this list, but I am sure it will make it to the top 10. I gave it four stars. And Emily Henry, of course. Whoa, this has a ton of ratings, 436,000. That's like double any of the other books uh, that I've seen, like Colleen Hoover included. So this one will probably win. I did read this. I think I gave it three stars. Not my favorite out of all of Emily Henry's but looks like it'll probably be the winner based on number of ratings alone. And then the Katie Robert book I have not read and this one I have not read or heard of. Okay, but I think my vote would be for one of the Colleen Hoover books. Oh wait, this one has almost 600,000 ratings. So never mind, I take it back. This is more than the Emily Henry, so this one will probably win. Although Emily Henry could contend but I actually think my vote would be for It Starts With Us. All right, getting into science fiction. I love science fiction as a genre, but I probably have not read very many of these books because I don't read nearly as much science fiction as I do mystery thriller and apparently romance. So ones that I recognize, Station Eternity, I have been interested in, but I have not read it. Only 775 ratings, so I don't think I expect this to make it to the top 10. Mickey 7, I have read. I apparently only enjoyed it three stars, but I do have fond memories of reading it. Emily St. John Mandel, I have not read this one. Upgrade by Blake Crouch. I did read this. I was underwhelmed compared to his previous books. I only gave it three stars, but I can see this one being a contender for this category winner because I think a lot of people will recognize his name. Ooh, The Measure. I'm so happy to see this on here. This absolutely will get my vote because, spoiler, this is probably going to be my favorite book of the entire year. Probably won't win this category, but I'm so excited to see it on here. Dead Silence I've been interested in. It sounds like it is Titanic in space or something like that. And that is all I've read from this category. Quickly moving on to horror. Hidden Pictures I have read. I would probably classify this more as a thriller, but I really liked it. I gave it five stars. Looks like Stephen King is in this category, so he'll probably win. We Spread by Ian Reid. I read this. I liked it. I gave it three stars, but a lot of people are absolutely loving this book, which is awesome. The Children on the Hill by Jennifer McMahon. I've seen a lot of people also liking. Sundial by Katrina Ward. I just recently read this book for the Slaughterfest readathon. Not showing up on here, but I did give it four stars. And that's all I've read from this category. So my vote would be for Hidden Pictures, but I definitely don't know enough about this category to predict a winner. Humor. I don't read a lot of nonfiction or humorous books, so nope, have not read any of these ones. Nonfiction, Same Boat, nope, haven't read any of those. Memoir and Autobiography, probably have not read any of these. Oh, I'm glad my mom died, of course. Uh, I think this one will probably win. And I also loved it, I gave it five stars. I have seen good reviews for this one. And I know Matthew Perry's just came out, but I think people are liking that one so far too. 
history and biography lol definitely have not read any of these graphic novels and comics not my personal favorite heartstopper will maybe win i guess because that's the one I recognize the most. Poetry, probably have not read any of these. Debut novel, I think um, books can duplicate into this category. Yeah, so if they've been in other categories for their genre, they're still eligible to be in here. So The Maid, definitely a contender for winner. Every Summer After, definitely a contender for winner. Ooh, and The Measure and The Violin Conspiracy are both on here, both five stars for me probably my number one and number two favorite books for the year so I'm excited to see them on here but probably not going to be winners. I would again probably vote for The Measure. Young Adult Fiction I don't read a ton of but I do tend to like it when I read it. The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson I did read this and I liked it. I gave it four stars. Oh and As Long As Lemon Trees Grow this is a pretty not popular book but I read it from Book of the Month and I loved it. Give it five stars. So probably would be the one I vote for, especially because I see Family of Liars on here by E. Lockhart. I loved, loved, loved We Were Liars, which is this first book in the series. And then this one is kind of a prequel and I gave it two stars. Ooh, and Ophelia After All, I have read this one and I gave it four stars as well. So that is fun to see. Young Adult Fantasy and Sci-Fi, not sure if I've read any of these. Heard of Bloodmarked. I know a lot of people have been highly anticipating this sequel to Legendborn, but yeah, I have not read any of the books on this list. Middle Grade and Children's probably going to be the same. Yeah, I have not read them. And that is it for the Goodreads Choice Awards. So how do I feel in general? I did see a lot of books that I've read or are on my TBR or that I'm excited are on the list. Going back to the mystery thriller category, I have read seven of the 20 initial nominees. That is going to get narrowed down to 10. And I think there's probably a good chance that most of the seven that I've read are going to make it to that top 10. So I will say it's a high likelihood that I will read the remaining books in the top 10 to be able to have read all of them and cast an honest vote for it. Also romance, I have surprisingly read a lot of the books in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Also seven. Yeah, also seven. Wow. Um, so maybe if a lot of those make it to the top 10, I could read all of the top 10 romance nominees. That would be interesting. And I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on the fiction, historical fiction, and science fiction winners because maybe I would be interested in trying those in the future as well. But I think that's all I'm going to keep for this video. Please let me know what books you have read that have been nominated for Goodreads Choice Awards. What are you picking as the winner for every category? And now I'm ready to watch other people's reaction to the initial nominees. Also, again, thank you Zinf for sending me a pair of glasses. One more reminder to check out the links in my description if you are in the market and want a discount. But other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.